everyone what is going on i'm sorry i'm late i was in uh i was central standard time i forgot this is east i'm in east coast time you guys so sorry about that welcome to the composing uh camera shots my name is stephanie davison and i would like to welcome you guys to this particular class in the e-missionary conference um i'm gonna get my notes set up here real quick so i can get them but um, i'm really glad that you guys are here with me today today we are going to be talking about uh composing shots for your ministry for your media ministry and so let me read a really quick rundown of what we're going to go through today so uh, in this session we're going to learn how to compose uh, a good camera shot we'll discuss the various types of looks that you can get from using different types of cameras and lighting and we'll also discuss how camera settings and lenses affect the end result of how things are streamed out to your audience. My name is Stephanie Davison, and I am the media ministry lead at my church, Living Word International Ministries in Salina, Kansas. And I would like to welcome you guys to this particular session. Um, before I get started, I want to say, uh, give a big shout out and say thank you to AJ for inviting me to uh, teach this uh, particular class. Let me straighten this camera up a little bit, you guys. Um, for allowing me to uh, be a part of this. Um, this is a very cool event, um, learning all these different topics. There's so many different sessions and different things that are being um, broadcast, and I'm excited just to be a part of this class and to be a part of the session. So let me switch over to my PowerPoint slide here. And so we are going to, uh, obviously, the class is entitled Composing Camera Shots. And so here are some discussion points that we're going to be discussing today. Um, what is your vision? Uh, what qu equipment do you have available? And then uh, that's just kind of some prerequisite stuff, you guys. Then we're going to get into co actually composing our camera shots. What do we need to do? What's important in composing camera shots? Um, there's a lot of points, but the main ones I have are camera settings, lighting, and how to properly frame your video. And then at the end, we're just going to talk about how we, we need to always remember, you know, it's it's all about ministry. It's all about um, what we, it's all about ministry. It's all at the end of the day, it's about, you know, Jesus and it's all about him getting the glory. So the very first question um, that I have for you today is, uh, but actually before we get started and what's your vision, I do, I do want to say this. I know that each and every one of us come from different churches. We come from different backgrounds. We come from different levels of expertise. And I by no means am a professional. I know I've been working in videography and photography like as a side thing for quite some time. And I've over the years I've learned. But like I said, I'm I'm coming from my experience. Um, so hopefully uh, you guys will get something out of this. Now, um, on to the slide, let's do this. Okay, so first question is, what is your vision? All right, when you are composing your camera shots, when you're composing these things, like what is your vision? What are you, what exactly are you looking for um, when you're composing a camera shot? So I know for me personally, I, um, I get ideas from other ministries and other churches. I look at things and I'm like, okay, that's really cool. Um, you know, and I jot it down. I jot that idea down or I look at, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm always, I'm always looking at different people and seeing how they're doing and seeing what I can pick from there. So what is your vision? Um, what do you want to see when you're composing your camera shot? You have to have a vision. You have to have exactly an idea or, uh, what, what you're wanting to see. Um, some things that you can ask yourself, do I want a, a single camera shot? Do I want multi-cam shots? You know, do I want a, a close-up shot? Do I want a wide shot? You know, how am I going Going to frame my shot so you have to know you know what your vision is and I know for me personally um, when working at my church I 
there's two different things that we stream. So one thing that we stream is our normal Sunday and Wednesday night services, which is just your basic church service. And then on the set on the first Saturdays of the month, we also have um, our women's ministry, which is Women of Destiny. So this is a completely different thing. Um, it's not in the sanctuary. We have a we have a set that we've built. We have um, design set design, and we have you know, a closer shot. So we have more ability to do things. So your vision, um, when setting up your proper camera shot is not always going to be the same for everything that you do. Um, like I said, Sunday service is different than a just talking headshot. And we don't just this, this that I'm talking about today, um, doesn't, isn't, doesn't just apply to, um, live streaming, but it can also apply to whenever you're filming, um, a special video for your church services uh, or when you're filming something for video announcements or different things like that. So all of these things, how do you, how you compose your camera shot um, works for all of those um, different things. All right. So the next thing we are going to talk about is what equipment do you have available? All right. So equipment and what equipment you have available is very important. And, um, a lot of times, especially, um, during this last past year, we've, we've had to use, um, videography. We've had to live stream due to, you know, the pandemic and everything. And when we were looking at, for me personally, I was looking at, um, different YouTube videos to see, okay, what kind of camera are they using? And if you're anything like me, I was, I'm like a techie person and it's like, oh, look at this cool thing. Look at that cool thing. And so many times when we are, you know, thinking about, like I said, the question is what equipment do you have available? We're always wanting to get the latest and greatest, the next big thing. But if you don't know how to use what you have, it would be pointless. So, and I know I'm, I am uh, guilty of this, always seeing this, uh, this great shot composed and like, oh, if I, if I just had this camera or if I just had this particular lens, then I would be able to get this perfect shot. But that is not the case. I know when I first started um, in videography and um, taking photos and I would see these professional photographers say, hey, you should get this lens or that lens. I would get it and I would get the same camera, but the shot would not look the same because I didn't know what I was doing. And so one thing I wanna encourage you guys to, to do is don't fall into the trap of just getting what people suggest. You know, work with what you have, perfect what you have. And I know when we were building our media ministry at our church, that's what we did. When we first started live streaming, we started with a with an iPhone. That's what we had. We started with an iPhone, and then eventually we um, put that iPhone on a tripod, and then eventually we got a camera. So we started with what, what we had. So I want to encourage you guys today, when you're thinking about um, composing your shot, don't try to get the latest, greatest equipment, especially if you don't know how to use it, all right? Use what you have. There is nothing wrong with starting with an iPhone. There's nothing wrong with starting with a, um, a um, inexpensive camera. And let me, okay, here it is this there's nothing wrong with starting with an inexpensive camera like this um we all know the canon vixia right um there's nothing wrong with starting with a small you know a dslr like or a point and shoot camera use what you have you know and perfect perfect that art when you're using what you have and you know like i said earlier you cannot have like if you're a tech person there's something new coming out every month. You cannot have enough equipment. There's always the latest and greatest coming out. So, you know, just um, use what you have and be okay with that. All right, so let's get into our main topic, all right? So the main topic and the main thing that we are getting into today is we are composing our camera shots. I'm sorry, you guys. I think the music is still playing. Sorry. All righty. Hopefully, I'm sorry. So hopefully you guys can hear me now. I didn't know the music was still playing. I apologize for that. All right. So we are composing our camera shots. All right. So what do we need when we are composing our camera shots? 
So here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about cleaning up our area. We're going to talk about camera settings. We're going to talk about lighting. And then we're going to talk about how to frame our shot. So, um, you know, really basic. And I know it's, it's, it's kind of funny, but the truth of the matter is, is that, hey, when, when you're composing up, when you're composing camera shot, you need to clean up the area. You know, we know where the camera, you know, as, as the videographer, as the media tech, you know where the camera is going to be pointing. And you need to be able to clean up those shots. You need to clean up the area. Even when I was um, setting up for today, there was a lot of eyesores that were in the background. And what I had to do was pick up, um, take stuff out of the, out of the way, you know, um, in church, in churches, you know, there's a lot, a lot going on on the stage. There's people up there, there's musicians up there, there's singers up there. And, um, we got to make sure that it looks nice, neat and organized. So the first point when you're composing a camera shot as, as you know, funny and as basic as it is, you got to clean up the area. All right. So cleaning up the area is very important when you're composing a camera shot, pick, pick up things, you know, if it, if things don't look right in your shot, do that. And then even, and even, um, that's for Sunday services, but if you're doing something smaller where you have, um, more control over your environment, you know, make a set, put things in your background that are going to look interesting, you know, and we're going to get to how, how we blur out our backgrounds, but, um, put things in your, in your set that are interesting, put things in your set that are, um, that, um, kind of, show who you are. So, I mean, if you look at the background for me, I'm a musician, you know, I play music and stuff. So I have a keyboard and I have a bass, um, over here. And so, you know, clean up your area, make sure things look neat and organized, you know, kind of design a set around what you're doing. That's if you're in, uh, kind of more or less a smaller type environment. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is camera settings, all right? So camera settings are very, very, very important. And um, I know it can be a little complex and it can be a little complicated, but we're we're going to break down camera settings here. So one thing um, that you can do is you can um, kind of compose a shot like this where you have the, the subject in focus, which I'm in focus, but everything in the background is blurred out. It's called bokeh or um, depth of field, uh, blurry background. And so there are some steps that you can take, especially if you're, now this is for um, dialing in your camera settings. And this is if you have something like a DSLR camera. Um, most of the times those DS, DSLRs are what you, what has interchangeable lenses. Um, I know the camera that I'm using right now is a Sony A5100. But um, they don't make those anymore. I think the next best thing to do to get is a Sony A6100. Those are, I think that that replaced it. But I have a Sony A5100 and I'm using a Sigma um, F1.4 16 millimeter lens. All right. And so let's talk about, let's talk about this for a moment. It's going to get a little bit complex, but I want to encourage you guys just to listen for, listen for now and then. Once we, once you get off, um, go look online on YouTube and, um, and, um, you know, learn a little bit more in depth. I'm just going to touch this stuff real quick. So when we are talking about developing a good shot where we have the background blurred and the, uh, subject and focus, one thing you want to do is look at, um, F aperture shutter speed and ISO. Okay. So the main thing that's very important, and as you guys can see on this graphic, um, is the um, aperture. So when we're talking about aperture, we're talking about how much um, light is going to be able to get onto the lens. All right. And so we're when, when we have a, a, a higher aperture, the as you can see, as you guys can see right here in this example, the um the lens is really closed, so a lot of light can't get in. So as you can see on these pictures, the bigger the, or the smaller the aperture gets, I'm sorry, the larger the aperture gets, the more and more the background is blurred out. And so that's what we're going for when we're um, talking about uh, creating or composing a good shot, particularly on DSLRs. One setting that you want to put in 
is you want to put in a small f stop. And that can be seen if you're, you know, if you're confused about, well, how do I know what my aperture is? It's always on your camera. So for instance, I'm going to show you guys this on this camera, if I can focus for a minute. Um, as if you can see that it says uh, 35 millimeter 1.2. So when you're composing your camera shot, the first thing you want to do is get your f-stop as large as possible. You want to open up your f-stop as large as possible. The second thing you want to do is you want to fix your shutter speed. So um, if you're filming, and I know we're getting a little technical here, you guys, but I really want to help you you to understand how we can get we can get a um, this compose this shot something that's a, a really blurry background, and so people can focus on the person presenting and not everything that that's going on in the background because I do know this you guys sometimes in some churches you know there's choir members the preacher's preaching and there's choir members sitting in the background the preacher's preaching and there's people walking around and so you don't want uh, people to be distracted and you want to be able to for the person that's watching for all of their attention to be on the preacher or the speaker and not everything else so, um, like I said, the first thing you want to do is set your aperture to as large as possible so we can get that blurry background. Another thing that we want to do is if you're, we're going to um, adjust our shutter speed. So, if you are, uh, most people stream at 30 frames per second. So, if you are filming at 30 frames per second, you want to set your aperture to two times that. So, if we're filming at 30, for, or your shutter at two times that. So, if we're filming at uh, 30 frames per second, what we want our shutter set, set to is 1 60th, all right? Because that's, it's kind of a film, filming rule of thumb to set your shutter two times what your, um, what your, your, your frames per second is. And then the last uh, thing that we look at is our ISO. And one thing that's very, very important about ISO, as you guys can see here on this picture, is that the higher the ISO, the more grainy your picture will be. So if you have like a very grainy looking um, composition when you when you have when you're filming, more than likely you have a really high ISO. So one thing, one way that we can keep ISO down is by our next point, lighting. So when you're composing your camera shot. One very important thing that I think a lot of us miss is lighting. I want to tell you this right now. Lighting is important. Lighting is so important when you are composing your camera shot. I feel like a lot of times we think we don't consider lighting when we um, compose our camera shot. So, for example, in my church, uh, what we did was... Um, we have high ceilings in my church and we have fluorescent light bulbs. And so, you know, the every, like, like any light bulb, those, you know, every light bulb doesn't go off at go, doesn't like blow at the same time. So when I was looking up in the ceiling, there's like all the light bulbs have different color temperatures and different brightness because they, they're all not the same light bulbs um, in there. And because of that, like, just for example, in our in my church in particular, one side of the church was really bright and the other was kind of dark. And even even more so in the back of the church where the camera wasn't facing, it was a lot brighter. But as we got to the front of the church, it got darker. And so you could see it when we were moving our ca when we were moving the camera around there was just inconsistency with lighting and we were gonna we were having to turn our ISO up w which was making it more grainy and there was less clarity in the video so what we winded up doing was getting some lights and when we put we put like just two um, LED tiny LED lights um, on each side and and um, like put it towards the subject like this one on each side, we were able to get more light in there, which caused our whole shot to look so much better. So I want to encourage you guys, lighting is important. And I know each 
um, different uh, sanctuary. Each different um, facility is completely different. But I want to encourage you guys today and let you know that lighting is super, super important. And even with um, lighting, the color of your background matters. I know, um, like I said, I'm just speaking from experience in our church because we had to, during this, um, during last year, we had to change a whole lot of stuff because we went, you know, we were only, we were live only. And so one thing that we had to do, um, the background wall where our, our preacher preaches is, was, was, um, like a golden yellow color. You guys, it was, that's, that was the color that our churches, our church was painted. And so because it was that color, it was causing, you know, we had to do a lot of adjustments, but it was just really dark when we pointed the camera towards our speaker. And what we had to do was just here recently, we painted the wall white. And so now we have a white wall behind us because it's just brighter and it causes um, light to reflect more. And we were able to get an even clearer shot because we changed, you know, the background of our um, of our wall and stuff. So I want to emphasize this. If I cannot emphasize one thing, like if you're struggling with composing a camera shot, one thing I want to emphasize that is very, very, very important is that you have to have proper lighting. You have to have proper lighting around your camera. When composing a um, good camera shot, lighting is key. Lighting is very important. You got to dial in those camera settings, but you have to make sure that you have good lighting because you can, um, to be honest with you guys, you can have the most expensive, greatest camera in the world. But if you don't have good lighting, there's, there's literally nothing that you can do about that. All right. So the next thing, uh, the last thing I want to talk about too, is just really basic how to frame your shot. Okay. And when I'm talking about how to frame your shot, I'm talking about, you know, where's the camera sitting, you know, and when you're framing your shot, is there too much room overhead? Like, I'll change it. I'll change this here. You might get to see a lot. But when you're framing your shot, you know, is the, I'll lower my chair. Is there too much space between the top of your subject and the ceiling? Are you seeing too much ceiling? You know, um, when you're framing your shot, are you, is the shot too wide or is the shot too close? Scoop my chair back up, you guys. <laughs> Is the shot too wide? Is the shot too close? Um, you have to be able to look at that. When you're, when you're framing a shot, you want to make sure just a couple of rules. Make sure there's not too much headspace. So, um, like, as you can see me right now, this is pretty good headspace, If like overhead space. And if I wanted to, you know, zoom in just a little bit more, see if this zoom works. See, this is not a good shot. Because number one, I'm not in the center of the camera. My head is cut off. And there's just, it's just not a good shot. So if I zoom out some, this is a much better shot. You know, I'm in the center of the frame. And one thing I like to do, I know everybody's different, but one thing I like to do is always try to keep the subject in the center of the frame. So I like to have, you know, equal, have equal amount of space on this side and this side and have the subject right in the center. Excuse me. And that's how, that's one way you compose a good shot. So when you're, when we're talking about how to frame your shot, make sure there's not, you make sure the subject's head is not cut off. Make sure you don't see like five foot of ceiling above their head. And then they're down here at the bottom of the shot. Make sure, you know, when, um, depending on where your camera's sitting, make sure we're not seeing people's heads in the audience, right? Make sure um, if you have a wide shot um, that we're not seeing people walk around a lot. Because I know for me personally, when I'm looking at, you know, church live streams and stuff, if I see people walking around and moving around, my attention immediately 
goes off of the the preacher and it goes into, hey, I wonder what they're doing. You know, I'm, I'm kind of one of those people that are easily distracted. <laughs> so make sure that you have those shots. Um, when you're composing a shot, make sure if make sure you're um, really looking around because sometimes we have a, a side shot where we have a camera coming from the side and we have a camera coming directly at us. Make sure you're composing each each shot accordingly because it's going to be different, right? Each shot that you compose is going to be different, so make sure when you're when you're doing that, the head's not cut off. The that they're always even even in the middle of the frame. All right. So really quick, once again, just when we're composing good camera shots, and I'm keeping it very very simple. Number one, just clean up your area. Make sure there's not a lot of things that are, are going on that are distracting. That's going to distract the viewer from um, focusing and paying attention on what's to what's going on. Number two, settings. Make sure that you are um, getting your settings dialed in, getting that um, aperture, getting that shutter speed, getting that ISO dialed in properly. When you're looking at lighting, remember, lighting is very, 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 very important. How much light is, is coming around the subject? How much light is you know, coming around the camera and make, make sure you're adjusting your settings based upon how much light you have. All right. And the last thing, how to frame your shot, make sure you don't have the camera is not way above a person's head. Make sure that you are always keeping that subject in center. And one thing I want to say about keeping that subject in center is that I know for our church, we had a DSLR and then we moved to like a PTZ camera because um, our preacher, he, mo he moves around a lot. And so what we had to do, and it, we're, we're still adjusting to that, is being able to move, move him and be in close enough and, and focus enough so that we're always keeping him in the center. And, you know, some, sometimes you just may have a wide shot and, and that just stays out, and that's fine too. But make sure that you're, you know, following all those rules. And the last thing I want to say is, really quick, is always remember – it's always ministry first. You know, we always have to remember that um, we're doing this, you know, that as e-missionaries, we are doing this to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that when we do this, do it in excellence. You know, do it as unto the Lord. Um, when you're doing these things, remember, you know, you may see two people live, but always remember there's people that watch the replay. And there's people that are on that just don't have, you know, a login and they, you can't see the actual number of people that are watching. So always remember, you know, this is a ministry and we are, you know, reaching people from all over the world through our ministry. And it's so important that we do things in excellence. It's so important that we take the time, that we perfect our craft, that we perfect, you know, what we're doing, that we perfect how we're doing it. That we are a rep, we what we do as media, um, as a media ministry is so very important, and it's so very important to, you know, take time, and you know, go and do those things. And one thing I want to encourage you guys too is sometimes we going back to what I had said earlier, you know, sometimes we we have what we need, and sometimes we don't. But always remember just do your best with what you have, you know, always, always, always put your, put the best effort forth with what you have. And like, like I said earlier, I want to encourage you guys again, when we, when I first started with our media ministry, all literally all we had was an iPhone and we were going to Facebook live. We were Facebook live from an iPhone and you know, that's what we did for, for the longest time. And then we were able to increase our quality. So I want to encourage you, start where you are. Don't try, you know, to reach perfection as soon as you jump in. Learn your craft. Perfect where you are. And I believe that the Lord will bless you to do very, very much more. And I know I got on late and I'm out of time right now, you guys. But I really appreciate you guys for um, listening to me today. And I hope you enjoy this presentation. Um, once again, thank you guys, or thank, uh, shout out to AJ, um, AJ Holmes for um, inviting me to this uh, live streaming conference. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, have a great day. I'll see you later.